are the frontline generation. And I tell you what, it scared the living daylights out of me. It occurred to me that the things that we admire most about Umasi Sulu, the things we will sorely miss her for, can only be passed on if we, this generation, choose to own it, to develop it, and to pass it on. So as I stand here today to celebrate and remember what it is that we treasure about Umago, I'm reminded again that the legacy of our mothers can only live through us. Scary? Of course it is. But we are the children of our mothers, and they've taught us well. So between us, we should just be able to get it together, to pick up the baton, and to run the race. And if this morning was anything to go by, I think we'll get it together. But I also often speak and I say, I believe we are an incredibly lucky generation. We are old enough to have lived through the era, even if it was the tail end, of colonialism, imperialism, and that legalized racism called apartheid. So we have first-hand knowledge of just how devastating the consequences of dispossession, discrimination, and legalized racism are, and why we should eradicate its very last vestiges, and why we should never, ever allow it to happen in our name or on our watch. And painful as it was, the knowledge is nevertheless invaluable, and we must not allow our knowledge and memories of that knowledge to become blunted as we become materially better off as individuals. Our generation is also lucky to be old enough to be part of a generation who can say, we obeyed the clarion call to submit or to fight. We stood up and we fought apartheid. And we were victorious. So like Uma Gogu, I can say with pride and with honesty, I carry the scars inflicted on me, my family, my community, and my continent through years of prison, detention, torture, and I carry those scars as my badge of honor. We are also a generation who are lucky to be alive, just to be alive to have survived that brutality. So today we should also honor the many who did not survive. Those who were murdered, killed in detention, buried in shallow graves. We are painfully mindful of those like Simpiwe Mtimkulu, who would have been my age today, he disappeared. Neil Agat, a young white trade union leader. Chris Hani, I don't need to introduce. Stands up Pape, I last saw him walk away from a meeting we had. We still don't know where he is. Stephen Bantubiko, who I ended up having to bury by default as a young woman of 19, because everyone else had been detained. And many, many like them who paid the ultimate price for my freedom. But we're also a generation who are still young enough to be part of building a very different future. And this I consider to be a huge privilege, and it excites me greatly. But this privilege also implies a set of very clear responsibilities, because it is our generation, us in this room, that has to shape what a post-colonial, post-apartheid Africa will look like. And this is a terrifying thought, because our elders 
are now departing one by one. Slowly but surely, we have to pick up the baton. We have to provide leadership. We are now the frontline generation. So today, I want to engage with you to get us all thinking about what legacy we as a generation will leave behind. As we gather here today to celebrate a life so well lived, a mother whose heart and home was so filled with love, compassion and courage, we should know that the best tribute we can pay to our great mothers and fathers will be to live our lives in such a manner that we emulate them and that we leave our countries, our continent, and indeed the world in an even better shape than when they left it. As cliched as it sounds, we need to be the change we want to see. Now, in this room, having lived through quite a few things, we are what sometimes the kids call people of a certain age, and it's usually a euphemism for people who are pretty well, yesterday's news, 30 seconds ago, whatever the latest thing is. And people of a certain age in every generation tend to look at the next generation with great judgment and criticism. We spend a lot of time bemoaning their behavior, their music, their clothes, or their lack thereof, their <laughs> values, <laughs> etc. And I suspect that if we debated the veracity of this, we could be here for a very long time, so I'm not going to go there. But I do want to challenge all of us by asking the question, whose children are these unruly youths exactly? Ought we not to take more responsibility to shape what the next generation will turn out to be? Are we not mainly the upright citizens we consider ourselves to be through the support, the discipline, and the examples of those who have walked before us? So let us step up to the plate and shoulder our responsibilities to grow the next generation in a manner that we would feel proud. Now, there is no doubt that the country of Umagogo's birth, South Africa, is indeed a much better place today. And we are grateful that our mother lived long enough to usher in democracy with us and to see how her well brought up children and grandchildren, we just evidence, are using the new opportunities presented to them under democracy. Today, South Africa is considered to be a leading nation globally. We can be proud that we are now invited to join many prestigious fora, unheard of and inaccessible to developing nations such as ours in the past. Our country's voice is listened to carefully all over the world. Our economy is very well run by qualified people, greatly evidenced like those in the Masilela clan and their cohorts, their friends, their colleagues, of whom we are immensely proud. Our constitution today is universally acclaimed as a benchmark for the world. Our judicial system in South Africa is held in high regard, both inside South Africa and outside. We adhere to the rule of law, and our democracy is underpinned by regular, free, and fair elections that just run better and better every time. And here I must say, largely due, or in great measure due to, three very smart women, could only have been women, who must make Umagogo smile every time we go to vote. 